sometimes the least exciting pieces of the construction process are the most important parts. And a lot of times we like to pick out the tile and the fun, beautiful pieces, but if we don't prepare for those top layers properly, it's very possible to ruin those and have a lot of damage and potentially have to redo your install. So in this video, we're gonna talk about uncoupling membranes. So what is an uncoupling membrane? Here's the deal, houses move, everything moves based on temperature changes, based on moisture changes, on your climate, there's so many reasons. Houses just move, they do, everything does. And so when you go to lay tile, if your house that you're laying the tile on, whatever your substrate is you're applying to, is moving over the years, over time with fluctuations, and you put tile over it, what can happen is if there's movement down here, it can cause your beautiful majestic tile on top to crack and be damaged. That's why you'll see things that are, they haven't had anything dropped on them, they haven't had any damage, and there's cracks running through the tile or your flooring product. So when you install flooring, you need to uncouple. You need to basically have something that makes it where your damage down here does not transfer to your top layer. Just to show you guys a little cross section. So right there you can see you have the plastic, you have a little bit of felt on the bottom and the felt on the top. So when you install this, this is gonna go down, you're gonna attach this to your floor, like what I have here, and then ultimately when you tile, that's gonna go onto the top. So when there's movement, the felt and these layers are gonna make it where you have a little bit of movement in that fabric versus transferring to the tile and cracking your tile. The first thing I like to do is cut out my pieces and then everything's just ready to go. If you roll it back up, then you're able to put it up against one wall or one edge and then roll it out once you have the thin set down. So in my case, I had to make three pieces to fit in the space. There are tons of different brands of uncoupling membranes or uncoupling mats, so make sure you read the instructions for your specific product on what type of thin set you're supposed to use to attach with. They're gonna specify whether you should be using a modified thin set or an unmodified thin set, and it can affect the adhesion and the drying, so make sure you read the specifications. You're gonna wanna mix your thin set pretty wet because although you wanna be able to trowel it out, you want those ridges to collapse easily so you get really good adhesion and coverage. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is don't make more thin sets or spread more thin set than you can catch up to at your work pace because you don't want it to skim over before you get the product over it. You want to get really good coverage and really good adhesion. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. So only work as far as you can before it glazes over. Depending on the brand of uncoupling mat you're using, you may or may not run into this, but I'm using the Red Guard product and it comes in a roll. So if you kind of look at it, you can see the edges have a tendency to want to roll up or cup. And so one thing you can do is just take it and roll it up the reverse way before you're going to lay it down. So I like to measure out and cut my sections and you can roll it out in reverse and that's just going to help. You can even wrap it up and leave it like that to help with a reverse roll. You really want to take the time to make sure you're getting a really good bond between your uncoupling mat and the floor or the surface below. So I'm smoothing this out with my hands and then I'm taking a magnesium float. This is just a concrete tool that I have. You don't have to use this just to smooth and press evenly across the whole surface to really get this, you know, to compress those joints underneath those trowel lines and to just press this and bond this in really well. The other thing you want to keep in mind is if you're going to have to stand on this product, what is underneath of it is still wet. So if you put a knee in it, it's going to make an indentation from your knee. So make sure you have a piece of board or foam or something where if you have to stand on it, it distributes your weight a little bit better. The other thing I'm doing is I'm taking a Clorox wipe and I'm just cleaning out any of the excess mud, the thin set that's oozed out of the sides that might make um, stick up a little bit. I want to make sure that they're flush, but they're not lifted on the edges. And I want to make sure that I don't then, if you have to, you could cut it out later with a blade, but if I can smooth it out now with a rag or a Clorox wipe, that makes it much easier down the line. The other thing I'm going to do is once I'm about finished, I'm going to put weight all along the side of this. So in my case, I use some random boards and some bricks, and I just put those in place to help prevent the cupping or the folding up of the edges from this coming in a roll originally. As you can see, I didn't install that last piece. I actually ran out of thin set, so I had to go to the store the next day and get some before I could install that last little corner section. One last thing, you guys, don't forget I was using this uncoupling mat for uncoupling purposes. If you also need this to help with your water resistance, they have corresponding bands that you can buy and apply with thin set over the joints to make it a waterproof surface as well. It smuds. Good girl.